eBay is the firm that marked a turning point in the development of the e-commerce industry with its innovative model. However, it has been on the decline in recent years. The founder of eBay, Pierre Omidyar, received his degree in computer science from Tufts University in 1988. In a short period, he discovered an exciting job with the Claris company. After working in the technology industry for several years and gaining some experience, Pierre felt ready to start his own business. With the help of a partner, he founded the company, Inc. Development, which at its founding focused on designing user interfaces. The company's operations gradually changed and eventually it transformed into an electronic shopping platform called eShop. This was Pierre's first encounter with the world of online commerce and led him to consider the feasibility of using other online trading methods. Everything that was known at the time is based on the business-to-consumer model or direct sales from company to consumer. However, Pierre was certain that a consumer-to-consumer -consumer model might eventually turn into a profitable business. As a result, he suggested that the eShop team try out this new kind of online commerce, which no one else was doing at the time and which may represent a revolution. But since the shareholders weren't buying into the vision, Pierre decided to leave the company in 1994 and focus solely on his new project. In order to be able to pay the bills, he started working at General Magic while he wrote the code for his new creation. It was a very difficult and risky decision to leave his previous company, but he realized that this project would end up transforming the online world and that staying on that project for the long run might cause him to stagnate in his professional career. If his investors couldn't see the potential in his groundbreaking concept, he would carry it through on his own. Finally, in 1995, he finished writing the code for the auction platform known as AuctionWeb, which was launched under the domain name eBay.com. The platform was a major success almost immediately because it was a tool that allowed users to sell their possessions directly to other users through auctions without the need for an intermediary. A broken laser pointer that belonged to Pierre himself was the first item to be sold for $1.14. This surprised the inventor of eBay, who approached the buyer of the item to inquire as to whether they truly understood what he had purchased. He said that, in fact, he liked to collect broken laser pointers. Following this, Pierre realized that eBay may serve as both a tool for users to sell items they no longer needed and a place for collectors from across the world to purchase unique or hard-to-find items. By 1996, the site had grown to the point that Pierre felt forced to change his site from a personal account to a professional one. This was related to an increase in the company's expenses. The portal had previously been the creator's hobby, but this forced him to add commissions to the transactions taking place via his platform, kicking off the business model that eBay is still using today. After that, Pierre decided that the time had come to take things more seriously, and they hired Jeffrey Skoll, who would later become the company's first president. The platform had more than 250 million subscriptions as of the end of 1999, and only six months later, this number had risen to 800 million. The data made it obvious how quickly the platform was expanding. At this point, the business was already prepared to start looking for investors. Benchmark Capital invested $6.7 million in the company that year. In addition to the financial investment, the plan included an experienced CEO who could take eBay to new levels. Eventually, in 1998, Margaret Whitman, a businesswoman known for having worked for significant companies including Hasbro, Disney, DreamWorks, and Procter & Gamble, joined the eBay team as the new executive director. The company had 30 employees, 1 million registered users, and annual U.S. revenue of $4.7 million at that time. Under Margaret's leadership, eBay managed to become a true, well-run corporation in a short amount of time. They made the decision to close the chemical and weapons products sections in order to improve the company's image and make it considerably more appealing to potential investors. In addition, Margaret launched a brand new department entirely devoted to brand promotion. From that point on, eBay was incredibly strong. That was the company's boom period, the platform was blowing in the wind, and it was predicted that growth would continue in the coming years. Additionally, when eBay first entered the market in 1998, each action cost $18. In only one day, that price had increased to $53. And four months later, the company's shares had already been sold for $300. eBay, which had become quite well known due to relics and collector's items, had evolved into an astounding tool for finding all kinds of secondhand goods at much more affordable prices. The variety of merchandise was amazing, from expensive boats to antique furniture and electronics. Even a cheese sandwich with a picture of the Virgin Mary on it was purchased by a casino for the price of $28,000. eBay also started to show interest in acquiring other businesses that might accelerate its growth. His two biggest purchases were Skype in 2009 and PayPal in 2002. More than 15 million people worked for eBay in 2008, and the company brought in close to $8 billion.
John Donahoe was then appointed as the company's new executive director at that point, but things were starting to change, mostly because of the enormous power and popularity that other electronic commerce websites like Amazon were gaining. The platform's performance didn't improve in the following years and the appearance of other applications for buying secondhand goods didn't help either. Many of them had considerably more current user interfaces and didn't charge their users any fees for selling items. Many shareholders and investors started to speculate that maybe PayPal's potential, which they had purchased in 2002, was being limited by the decadence that was afflicting the company. One of PayPal's biggest investors, Carl Icahn, pushed for the company to permanently split from eBay and operate as an independent business, something that finally happened in 2015. PayPal is doing rather well for itself, whereas eBay is still trying to find its place in the electronic commerce market today. With so many competitors appearing around them, eBay hasn't been able to maintain its business model, which has been in place for more than 20 years. But consumer habits are changing more quickly than ever before, and if eBay wants to regain its position as the industry leader in electronic commerce, it will have to put in a lot of effort and adopt novel and groundbreaking measures in order to go back to the top. eBay is in a tough spot, and if it wants to survive in the long run, it will have to come up with something really innovative. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.